Hey guys, this is Tony from freshcatmushrooms.com and today I wanted to do a video on growing mushrooms in bottles. Now, why would anybody want to grow mushrooms in bottles as opposed to typical mushroom grow bags? There's a couple of different reasons for this. If you want to run a large mushroom farm, using bottles really helps the mechanization process or being able to move the bottles through different machinery for inoculating and for all sorts of other processes that otherwise would have to be done by hand. So it can really help mechanize the process. But even for smaller growers or even home growers, there is some advantages to bottles. The one problem with mushroom grow bags is they're a one-time use and if you grow a lot of mushrooms, you'll start to see these piles of mushroom grow bags and maybe start to think about other ways that you can have perhaps a more environmentally friendly way of growing mushrooms. Growing mushrooms in bottles provides that because you can reuse the bottles over and over and over again. There are some disadvantages to using bottles as well. One of them is that you have to clean out the bottle after you harvest the mushrooms. You're also likely to get smaller mushrooms and that's just because the bottles have a lot smaller volume of substrate to produce the mushroom fruiting body. But in general, the process is pretty simple. We're gonna mix up our substrate and then fill the bottles. But in the center of the bottle, we're gonna bore a small hole just as a place where we can add our grain spawn to inoculate the bottles. After that, we're gonna put a lid on the bottles and allow them to colonize for a week or so. And once they're fully colonized, you open up the top of the lid, scrape off the top layer of mycelium, and you should be able to fruit those mushrooms. Now in this video, I'm gonna be growing enoki mushrooms. Now this is a mushroom that is commonly grown in bottles to get that characteristic skinny look with a small cap that enoki is well known for. But you can grow many other mushrooms in bottles including maitake, uh, all types of oysters including king oysters, pretty much anything except shiitake. Now there are bottles that are made specifically for growing mushrooms and they look just like this. They're 100% reusable and 100% autoclavable. So you can put them in your pressure sterilizer to sterilize the substrate. The other cool thing is that they come with a filter lid. So this lid acts as a filter for any of the incoming air when the bottle's cooling off after sterilization or while the bottle's colonizing. It'll allow the mycelium to breathe while preventing contamination. These are the bottles that are made specially for larger mushroom farms that want to mechanize their processes. Now if you're growing at home and you want to grow mushrooms in bottles, a mason jar works just as well. The only difference is you're going to have to modify the lid in order to allow the mycelium to breathe. So for this one I've just simply drilled a small hole in the top and pulled through some poly stuffing or pillow stuffing. These are the exact same bottles that you can use to make grain spawn so they work really well for both purposes. So now we're just going to go ahead and fill these bottles with substrate. I have the master's mix here, I got another video on that, but this is basically just a 50-50 mix between uh, soy hulls and hardwood sawdust. I'm going to go ahead and fill the bottles right up to below the neck, and then we're going to go ahead and bore a hole right through the middle of them just as a place that we can um, add our spawn. So I'm sure you can come up with a better way of doing this or filling them automatically, but I basically just use a spoon, a big plastic spoon, and fill up the bottles. So you want the substrate to be packed, but not too hard packed, um, but compressed down a little bit. So basically once the bottle's filled up, I just kind of knock it down a couple times just to get a bit of compaction. And then you find if it goes a little bit too low, you just might need to add a little bit more substrate. And like I said, you want the substrate to be right on the neck line of the bottle. So once your bottles are all filled up, the next step is to bore a hole through the center and that'll serve as a place where you can inoculate it with your grain spawn. I simply just take a, a handle of a wooden spoon and bore a hole right through the center of the bottle. As you can see, that leaves a nice place where you can inoculate with grain spawn. That way the grain spawn can come right down to the bottom of the bottle and it can colonize the bottle from the inside to the outside instead of just going from the top down. So these are the filter lids that are specially made for these bottles. As you can see, there's little tiny holes on the inside and little slits on the outside and that allows for airflow through the lid of the filter while filtering out any contamination that might be present. And one more thing, once you've drilled the hole in the center of your bottle, make sure you're careful when you're handling it because if you put them on their side or you put it upside down, it'll collapse that hole and then when you take it out of your sterilizer, there won't be a hole in there to inoculate with your grain spawn. So once you bore the hole, just 
Be careful with it, put the lid on, and then just put it straight into the sterilizer. When it comes out, that hole should still be there, and you'll have a place to add your grain spawn. So that's it for this. Now we're gonna add these to the sterilizer. Since these are smaller than the big five pound fruiting blocks, we only have to sterilize them for about 90 minutes. So we're gonna put them in there for 90 minutes at 15 PSI, and when they come out, they'll be ready for inoculation. Before I use the bottle, I want to go ahead and wipe it down, wipe down the outside of the bottle with alcohol. Just to clean out any contamination that might be on the outside of the bottle. You also want to wipe down with alcohol the outside of the spawn bag. Just to prevent any kind of contamination uh, that might be sitting on the outside of the bag that will work its way into the bottle. Then we're simply going to Cut in a corner, open up the spawn bag, and inoculate into the top of the bottle. Okay, so it's been about a week or so now since I inoculated these uh, bottles and as you can see the mycelium is starting to work its way through the substrate even through the bottom there and it's working its way from the middle out towards the edge of the bottle and probably about another week or so before these bottles are fully colonized and we'll be able to fruit them. Okay, so here's the bottle. As you can see, it's fully colonized all the way through. And if you look closely, there's already some fruits forming at the top of the bottle. I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, lots of little enokis have already started to pin. We're actually gonna remove those and scrape that off just so we have a fresh new uh, layer of substrate for the mushrooms to fruit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick those off. And then I'm gonna take a fork and just scrape off a thin layer of substrate at the top. And what that does is it kind of reinvigorates the top layer of mycelium and allows new pins to form at the mouth of the bottle. So now we're gonna go ahead and put this bottle in the fruiting chamber and wait for fruits. A lot of times with these bottles too, if you want to get the tops to pin um, after you've scraped it, once it's in the fruiting chamber, if the humidity isn't really, really high, you can always take like a microfiber cloth or even a damp paper towel and just hold it or place it on top of the bottle, just like that, and that'll keep the humidity um, really high between the top of the bottle and the top of the substrate. This is a technique that they use at some of the larger bottle farms. Obviously they don't use wet paper towel, uh, but they do have like blankets of microfiber cloth that they can lay over top of all the bottles to encourage pinning uh, once the bottles have been put into the fruiting chamber. So I have another bottle now of Enoki that's fully colonized and I was gonna do the same thing where I just pop the lid off the bottle, remove whatever's there and fruit it again. But uh, if you look inside this one, you can see that it's, uh, absolutely covered in uh, enoki fruiting bodies. It kind of looks like bean sprouts. Um, so it already fruited in the bottle way before it was fully colonized and it fruited so much and grew so much that we got um, a whole heck of a lot of enoki. So I think for this one I'm going to try something different. I'm going to remove all those fruits. I'm going to scrape the top of it. I'm going to put it back in the fruiting chamber with a taller rim around the neck of the bottle. Uh, just because the enoki that I do have already fruiting the fruiting chamber, it seems like they don't really want to grow too much higher than the neck of the bottle. You end up with these short um, little mushrooms and I want to get that long kind of traditional enoki look with them. So I'm going to play around with that and we'll see how it works. So I'm sure there's a better way to do this but I just have this extra piece of a mushroom grow bag um, that I'm going to wrap around the neck of the bottle and then just go ahead, put an elastic band on it. And there we go. And I'm gonna do the same with the other two bottles that are in the grow room right now. There we go, so I hope that this uh, extra piece of plastic will kind of encourage the Enokis to grow further up 
and venture past the top of the bottle so that we can get that traditional long enoki look. And here is some enoki that I have fruiting just on a normal uh, master's mix fruiting block. And uh, you can see they're actually fruiting pretty nice all over the top of the block. But they're still not getting that really long, tall look. And I'm thinking because they're not deprived of CO2, um, which would help them grow nice and long. But otherwise, they still look uh, pretty nice. You can also see in this bag that I have here, um, the enoki that's kind of fruited off the bottom at the side of the bag and worked its way up. That looks more like your traditional enoki. Um, just because when it's growing there, it's got to reach up high to get to the fresh air. That's what it's trying to do. So it's another reason why I'm hoping these, um, these bags on the rim of the bottles will help encourage that elongated growth. So as you can see, this method's actually working pretty well. Um, there's the enoki, they're growing straight up now. You can see they're making their way up past the neck of the bottle and working up through that sleeve. Um, so it won't be too much longer now before I'd want to harvest these. And same with this one over here, they're starting to grow straight up. So as you can see, growing enoki in bottles works pretty well. The enoki mushrooms are starting to push their way up through that sleeve, and we're starting to get that longer, kind of thin-stemmed look to the enoki mushroom that you're used to uh, when seeing it at the grocery store. And growing mushrooms in bottles works for a lot of other species as well, including oysters and even maitake, and it's pretty much the exact same process. Of course, mine is putting that sleeve at the top. For oysters, etc., you'd want to just leave them to grow right out from the top of the bottle. So I'm gonna let these mushrooms grow out a little bit more then I'm gonna be harvesting them. But as far as growing mushrooms in bottles, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.